Hello, fellow gaijins! Welcome back to the Japanese Basics for Beginner series. Now, you may notice that my voice is a little bit strange, and that's just because I was sick for a few days, and I guess my voice has still not recovered completely, but I can talk pretty well now, and I'm just, yeah, just recovering from all of that. In today's episode, I want to just take a chill look at the first few pages, maybe chapters of the manga called Yotsubato, which is usually the most recommended manga when it comes to beginner reading, because yeah, it's just a kid talking all the time with some complicated things said by like、um, adults, but usually the kid is really talking in very, very easy Japanese with a lot of hiragana, katakana. And there are a lot of furigana as well. Now, it's been a while since I've done an episode like this, and I'm thankful for you guys、um, that have been waiting it out and just, yeah, been supporting me for all the other videos, like the vlogs and stuff like that. I've been very busy with university, which started like three weeks ago, so it's been hard to actually sit down and record something. So I've been just editing stuff that I've still had from like the, the, the trip to Japan with just the footage we had and stuff like that. So I thought, yeah, just making these is much less time consuming than. Editing a full video with a lot of like text on the screen, which takes time to actually input. But now that I've sorted out the first few weeks of university, I'm ready to actually start doing videos again, like recording and editing them a little bit better than just making vlogs, which are quite easy to edit because there's no text in them. I've seen other videos show manga online, but they usually show the physical version. But I don't think that's the best way to actually read with you guys. So I thought I'd just, yeah, just take this version from the internet. If you want to look it up yourself, you can just Google it. If you want to buy Yotsubato,、um, you can usually find it on Amazon or any other bookshop that has Japanese imported books because Yotsubato is really one of the more popular mangas that beginners read. So, yeah, it should be available in any Japanese bookstore in, in wherever you live. Now, I found the first book in a Japanese bookstore here in Zurich, in Switzerland, where I live. So, if it's available in Switzerland, which is a very small country, it should be available in bigger countries as well. I always prefer physical books over just scan lighted stuff. I don't know why. It just the feels just better, like lying in my bed and just reading the book just feels good. You might have also noticed that my face is gone. And I feel like when we read together or just do like exercises and stuff, you don't really need to see my face.、Uh, I don't think you have to see my face in any other situation as well when we're studying stuff, but sometimes it's, it's, it's funny to have my face on screen as well. I don't know. <laughs> now, one more thing I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about for quite a while now is first of all, what if the video is taken down? Because of copyright or anything like that, like I have no idea how this will work. So, if、uh, YouTube thinks like if YouTube says, like, yeah, you this is not good, I will take it down, of course. But then I would just try to do this on another platform, like on another video platform, or it's just somewhere else where it's、uh, okay to upload videos like these. Because I think practice lessons with reading is actually the most efficient way to just、um, understand everyday Japanese if you don't have a person to talk to every day. And another thing I've been worrying about is if I should do voices. <laughs> like if the child is speaking, should I actually do a child voice or should I like just read the text, which would be a little bit less,、um, I guess, immersive. <laughs> But at the same time, it's not as dumb if, I don't, if I'm like. Yeah, Otosa. I, I can't really do any. <laughs> I can't do any child voices anyway, but I'll try for now. I'll try to go with the flow and just try to do voices. But if this doesn't work out, I might change to having a normal voice. So bear with me. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you feel immersed by this or if it's just a bothersome thing which you wouldn't. Really want to have in your learning videos. The font of like the manga itself is strange, but that's just for like titles and stuff like that. Usually, the, the, the written part is always the same font. This is a yo tsu ba to. The to is usually an end between two nouns, as many of you know, but in this case, it's used as with. So if you say, I'm doing something with a person, you would say the name and then just to, and then it just means with that person. So here it's with Yotsuba, which implies that you will do stuff with 
Yotsuba. Yotsuba is like that little girl here, and she's moving with her father to a new village. Now, I haven't read much more than like half of the first volume because it got kind of boring with time, but I can definitely see why many people recommend this. After some chapters, it's also going to be the first time for me, so that might be fun as well. Like, I don't know the story at all. I just know that they're moving somewhere <laughs> and then there's a lot of other people coming into the story and it's it's quite funny. There are a lot of fun, like, yeah, child moments where the child just does some dumb shit. <laughs> Yeah, also what I wanted to say is that I will um, show the grammar on screen. So if I say like, this is the grammar that we had in episode seven or something like that, like I won't say the specific episode, but I might say, yeah, we've, we've done this. I will show the grammar on screen every time I talk about some new grammar, for example, or I just explain something new. I might also go to the dictionary in the second tab and just type in the words real quick and show them to you so that you can like, yeah see the dictionary entry to any words that I might have difficulties explaining, for example. Alrighty, let's uh, scroll down a little. Mokuji. Uh, yeah, that's just uh, the different chapters and the pages. We'll skip that. Oh, well, let's read the first chapter. Hikoshi. Now, hikoshi just means um, moving. Yeah, just moving. <laughs> and not moving in, in, like, in terms of movement, but in terms of moving houses. So you move from one house to another. Hikosu is the verb to move, and hikoshi is the noun. It's very often used, like if you have a verb that ends on su, you can just add the, you can uh, turn the su into a shi and it becomes a noun. I really, really like the art style in this manga. It's very, very like detailed and stuff, even though it's like for children, it's very nice. Uh, I'm not really sure if the manga is for children though, but it's a child speaking, so it is really easily translated, I think. Yotsuba to hikoshi. So as you can see, it uses the Yotsuba to um, as a like it's the title of the manga, but at the same time it's used in the titles to represent it as you will do this with Yotsuba. It has a like a, a bit of a Dora wipe, so let's do this together kind of thing because it's a kid and it's just gonna experience a lot of new stuff. So Yotsuba, let's move with Yotsuba. Now I hope you know hiragana well, if you don't, please look at the hiragana cards again in the description. I will leave the quizlet sets there because you need to know hiragana to read this stuff. If you don't know hiragana, yeah, I think it's better if you do. Now I have this mouse here and I can actually like highlight stuff. Now I will do this just to tell you where I am reading, but first I will read it without highlighting it just so that it's um, more clear where like what I'm reading. But after I've read it and I'm explaining stuff, I will highlight it and then I will like show you stuff on the screen. Uh, yeah, so I will read this um, everything. I will read one page entirely and then I will look at one frame per uh, time and we will just break it down. And also I will talk about like the story and the correlations between the single frames if there is something interesting to say about it. All right, so Yotsuba says, oh, <laughs> all right. Yotsuba says, Oh, Mosugu da zo, Yotsuba. Oh, <laughs> Suge, Tochan, Koko, ye, Ipai, Aruna. So da ro, Omise mo aruzo, Omise mo ka. The O here is just reaction, like it's like, Oh, the same as in our language. And then the, the dead says, Mosugu da zo. That means, Mosugu means, um, soon so i think this is in the vocabulary I, I picked out a lot of words of the first two chapters i think and put them in the vocabulary of the last episode we had just so that you are prepared for understanding words like mosugu for example da is just des in the very informal form here um he could also say mosugu desu yo the zo is like a yo but it has a rougher tone to it so often used by men, not often used by women. Like women rarely use zo or ze. It's the same thing, ze, zo. You can, for example, say iko ze or ikuzo, ikuzo. You've definitely heard ikuzo, I think. In manga it's, or in anime, it's often used, ikuzo. Yeah, usually you talk about new information when you use yo, but in this case, it's more like, yeah, teaching something. So he's like, we're almost here. And the zo is like, you probably don't know this, so I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> And here it just says Yotsuba, the name. 
and Yotsuba again. Oh, so this thing here uh, just makes the sound longer, as same as here, and like double. And the little tsu just makes it very like abruptly finished. So it's like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't really do it well, but yeah, it's, it's usually used just to, to give it like a little bit of spice. Like if it would be just, oh, it wouldn't end on a very abrupt thing. Here it ends very abruptly. I don't think this is too important, but yeah, just so you know why the tsu is here. And then he, uh, she says, suge. This actually means sugoi, which means awesome. Um, and it's just very slangish. Like she says it in a very slangy way. Usually younger people say this. I don't think um, too many adults use this, but it's if you're with your friends, for example, you can use this very, very casually, which is even more casual than just saying sugoi. Suge. Many people use it, especially men as well, again, and kids, of course. So she's a kid, so she uses a very rough language. Tochan, koko ye ga ippai aru na. Tochan just means father. I mean, it's more like dad, because father means otosan, which is the very formal way of uh, calling someone father. But here is just the very cute and like informal way of saying otosan, which uh, just san just becomes chan, which is usually used for cute little things or females. But it's also often used to just sound cute. And often, um, for example, girlfriends use chan with their boyfriends, even though the boyfriend is male. So they use chan just because they're very, very close. And also parents or children use chan like with each other. So yeah, just so you know. And the oto san, the o at the beginning is not you is not needed. The word itself is just to. And then the honorific san or chan is just added at the end and the o is just optional if you want to be very polite or you don't have to say it at all if you just want to be casual you can also say tosan for example then she says koko ie ga ippai aru na koko just means here then she says ie ie is house we've learned the kanji for ie i think uh, but you can see the free gana here i hope it's um it's seeable, <laughs> like it's very small, but I hope you can see it. And then ga, which is a particle ga. Ippai, which means a lot, a lot of. Aru is the verb for exist or have. And na is just like exclamation particle at the end. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to explain it, but it's the same as ne. It's very similar, but it's not, it's not exactly the same, but it's used in a similar way. Like, it's like, if I, for example, say, I really want this, and it's like dreamy in a sense. Like, I'm like, I really want this. Uh, if I could have this, it would be so nice. And then na is often used. Like, it's like, ah, kore hoshi na. And hoshi means to, to want something. Or I want to do this. Kore shitai na. And with this, you like, say like, Oh, it's so like, you know, this is oh at the end is kind of, oh, I really want to do this. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, there's so many houses. It's like uh, in a way like this, but I don't think you have to fret over it too much because it's very situational and also like subjective, I think. But it's often used at the end, yeah. So that all. So is just, that's how it is. So is often used like um, if somebody says something and you agree, you can just say so. And daro is like right in this sense. So it's like that's true, right? Here, that's true, right? Exactly. And then he says omise mo aruzo. Omise just means shops. Uh, here he means in plural, right? Here again, this is also plural. This ye, you you notice it because of ipai. Ipai means a lot of, so it implies that ye is plural here. Uh, omise mo aruzo. This you in in this case I would say it's plural, and he uses the particle mo. Mo is um, used at the same place as ga and wa, and mo means as well. So in this case it's uh, there is shops as well. Omise mo aruzo, and the zo again is like teaching. It's like he's like saying it in a way bec uh, like the kid doesn't know what he's talking about, like he didn't know be she didn't know before. And he says it with zo, now she knows it. And then she says, Omise mo ka. 
Now this this omise mo ka is also kind of casual. Um, usually you would say omise mo desu ka, just to be polite. But you you cannot really say omise mo da ka. That's why you just that's why you just leave the da away and you just say omise mo ka. Um, for example, if you want to say let's go or do you want to go or like let's go in a, in a question, then you can just say ikoka. And here again, it's the same thing. Like it's just the deska without the dis. Um, it's often used in very very casual language, and we didn't really cover it yet. But yeah, it's very very casual, um, kind of slangy. So often used with family and friends. They now drive by a school, and they see a lot of students. And she says, "Suge, hito ga ippai iru. Kyo wa matsuri ka? Gakko da gakko. So ya." Alright, uh, here again, すげ is like the slangy version of すごい. Hito means person, right? Or people. Here it's people because she says いっぱい, which again implies that um, it's a lot of them. So she says ga is again uh, the particle. So iru is the same as aru and it means to exist, but it's only used for living things, so animals and people. Then Yotsuba says, Kyo wa matsuri ka? Kyo wa means today. Wa is the particle for um, topics. So kyo, which means today, is the topic of this sentence. Matsuri ka? Matsuri is the word for festival. And ka is again as before, the same as this ka, and it just forms a very informal question. She could actually form this question without the ka. She could just say, Kyo wa matsuri? But she just chose to put the ka at the end, which is very slangish again. She uses a lot of like very common slang. So people in Japan actually talk like this if they talk very casually. The answer of the father is, Gakko da, gakko. He just says twice, it's school. Gakko da is the same as gakko des, it's just informal. And the da here really gives a, a like a emphasis on the gakko. It's like, he's like, it's school. It's like he's trying to really emphasize that she doesn't know it. I, I feel like it's like that because he says like gakko da, gakko. That's also why he says it twice and it's why he uses the da. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm reading too much into it. I just, he just says it's school twice. Then he says, Soya. This is super countryside ish, and it is a lot of, it is like a an accent. Like if you go, for example, to Fukuoka, people talk Hakata Ben, and there the da can be also said as ya. So he really, Soya. He could also say, Soda. But I think he really says this because, and I think he really says this because he's from the countryside, the ya. Um, or just from a prefecture that has a strong accent, like Osaka or Fukuoka. So ya, ashita kara natsu yasumi da na. Ashita kara just means from tomorrow. Ashita is tomorrow, and kara usually is if you go from somewhere to somewhere, you use kara and made, but in this case it's not in the physical sense, but really like from tomorrow onwards. And natsu yasumi means uh, summer break. So from tomorrow onwards, it's summer break. Again, he uses this na, and it's really hard to explain those sentence endings without like uh, like talking too much about it, but he uses this in like a dreamy way. It's like, oh, it's like this, you know. Um, I wouldn't bother too much with that. Just, yeah, just know that this is not part of a word, but it's like an expression at the end that turns the feeling of the sentence into a direction. In this case, it's like the dreamy direction where he talks to himself. Usually people use this long na, which is prolonged by this little a. It's very little, by the way. This is not an, an, a regular sized a, but it's little. Just so you know, you can use little hiragana as well. I don't think we talked about this in the lessons, but yeah, small a exists as well. And it's just the same as like a 
like this thing with, uh, for example, katakana. It just prolongs the sound. And yeah, as I wanted to say, when people talk to themselves, they often use this expression like, ah, oh, it's such a good day, for example. Ihidana. But yeah, uh, not too important. Next page. That's really cute. Like, <laughs> here Yotsuba just uh, waves to this girl. And if you remember, we had the word for to wave your hand or to tremble in the vocabulary, and this will be used here. So, Amari nori dasu to abunai zo, one chan ga te futta, to chan mo fure, to chan te ga hanase nai kara na, boku no bun mo yotsuba ga futte kure. Now this was kind of slow, but <laughs> I'm also not the fastest reader and I'm trying to be even a little bit slower so that you can actually hear what I'm saying. Uh, you can just tell me in the comments if it's too slow. I can read faster if you want to, if you need that. So it's not too much on this page as well. Again, just really not too much text, so it's really easy to follow the story. Here you can see she waves to this girl and he says, Amari. Nori dasu to abunai zo. Amari uh, means too, not too much, like too, it's, it's also like less. It can be used in different ways. Here it's not too much, like don't do this too much. It's often used with a negative um, form of a verb, but here it's not used with the negative form. Here it's used with nori dasu to. And I cannot really explain this right now too in depth because we haven't ex we haven't talked about this at all in the lessons. But this nori dasu to, nori dasu means to like lean out, and the to is like if you do that, abunaizo. If you do that, it's kind of like that. Um, the abunaizo, abunai means dangerous here. You can see the furigana. I don't. I really don't know if you can read this, but yeah, here it says abu. Abunai means dangerous, and the zo again is like telling her. Yeah, it's just the same as yo, but very manly, <laughs> very rough. Uh, so yeah, the to, there are a lot of ways to say if you do this, this will happen. So it's like, usually it's just this, or no, this is the consequence of this, and to is used here. Don't use this form too much. We will definitely look at it in lessons in probably maybe two or three lessons from now, where, uh, well, grammar lessons, not practice lessons. It's very important to know these forms and there are a lot more than just this one, which can be kind of confusing, so I will not go into this now. Yotsuba says, Onechan ga te futta. Here she says te very long with this elongated small e, which again, it just makes the the E sound of te longer. Um, and the sentence means the girl or sister in this case, but uh, she doesn't really say sister because onechan is often used for strangers that are like sister age. So between maybe, maybe 12, no, maybe 15 and 25 years old, it's often used. And then, well, maybe older even like maybe 15 and 35, I don't know. And from that point on, obasan is used, which actually means auntie. Uh, so you're like, sister, sister, please, for example, help me. If you go to somebody and be like, onechan, onechan, taskete toka. That would just mean, yeah, sister, sister, <laughs> something like that. You can use this with strangers, which is totally fine. In Japan, you can talk to anybody with like, yeah, sister or brother. Uh, it also works with men. And she says, Onechan ga te futta. So she says, the girl outside, ga, which is the particle, um, subject particle, so this is the subject of the sentence. Te, so the subject means that this girl did the action. Te just means hand, and this again makes the e longer. Te futta. Here, she just doesn't say the o which is actually not needed in casual speech. A lot of the particles can just be left away. It's very understandable if you just say te futta. But yeah, usually here a o is used um, just so that you know that 
this is actually done by this person and this is the object that is used to do this or this is the object that the action is done on she waved her hand futa means to wave or to um to tremble but here it's to wave tochan mo fure this again very interesting uh, very interesting wording tochan again very casual for otosan mo just means to so you too fure fure is the same as futte we we talked about this in a lesson and it means it is the imperative form of furu and fure is the same but ca more casual so futte alone is already pretty casual and fure is almost rude so for example in anime uh, some some characters often say shine and shine means die <laughs> usually the te form of die is shinde but there is also this imperative form which is even more imperative than just the te form and this is not used in formal settings only in very 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 casual settings where you know that the other person will not be upset so really honestly only family and even then it's not used too much it's often used in mangas and animes very very heavily used actually just yeah shine fure damare damare means just shut up <laughs> but usually if you would want to say shut up you just say damatte which is the te form of damaru yeah shut up <laughs> the father just replies with tochan te <laughs> which again he just leaves away the no here usually you need a no to connect the word tochan with te and to to give to give like the sense of ownership so it's my my hand and he replies like he replies with himself in third person which is often done when talking to children in japan so here he's like your father cannot blah 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 <laughs> yeah so the no is just omitted here but usually you would have to put a no here so te uh, so so tochan no te ga again the subject particle this is the subject uh, your father's hand <laughs> wa hanase nai kara uh, hanase nai we haven't talked about this i think i don't know the the scientific term but it is basically you can or you are able to do something form <laughs> so hanasu basically means to talk like you know to talk but in this case it's a different kanji here's the difference between to talk hanasu and to let go hanasu in this case it's the let go because he says your father cannot let go and this is the cannot let go hanaseru is not the same as hanasu right hanaseru is the i can do something i can let go so yeah i wouldn't worry about other verbs but in this case it just uh, it's just yeah to be able to do something so hanase nai is just the negative of this so i am not able to let go so he literally says your father's hand is not able to let go and then you see the kara here kara is that's why kara the na again ignore this uh it's again not a word it's just kara na it's like he's trying to um tell yotsuba a reason and uses the na in kind of a we don't have this in english so it's very very hard to explain it's just a very nuancy kind of thing he could easily omit this and not say it and it would be just as well um understandable and totally the same sentence but with this it has more of an authoritarian kind of like um feeling to it so he's like i'm not able to do this so yeah please do it yourself or something so it feels like kind of condescending a little bit he really uses it out of his fatherly position stuff like this hard to know or to uh, really understand it as a beginner if you don't have the conversational experience which we are trying to build up in this course <laughs> but at the same time it's hard to explain this for somebody who has never seen it so yeah let's go to the next stuff ore no bun mo yotsuba ga futte kure here it's like a new sentence. He says, 
Ore no bun. Ore no bun just means my part. So, my part, mo, also, or two, as well. <laughs> Yotsuba, which is the girl. Ga, which is the uh, particle for subject. So, Yotsuba is the subject. Ga, futte kure. Futte kure, um, again, is something we haven't seen yet. But I can just tell you, kure is the same imperative form as fure. It's very, very imperative here. He's like, do it. You should do it. <laughs> now, if we go into more in-depth stuff about this form, it's the te form, fute, and kure, which is do it for me. Um, if you, like, we haven't talked about this, so don't, um, don't sweat about it. But just to explain it real short, if you just take the te form and then add kureru, the word kureru at the end of the te form, it means uh, to do something for that person. So if I say, mm, hon o yonde kureru, this means to do, to, to read the book for me. And if I want to put this whole thing into imperative, I can just take the word kureru and then make the te form. And he just says, do it for me. So in summary, it's like tochan no te or tochan te ga hanase nai kara na. Uh, your father's hand cannot let go. That's why ore no bun mo, my part as well. Yotsuba ga, you, you, <laughs> futte kure, do it for me. So please or not please, it's really like wave my part as well because i cannot let go is basically what he says well she goes and proceeds with waving to anybody and everybody she sees which is really cute <laughs> i kind of like that and well now it gets kind of complicated because this kind of guy this uh jum jumbo <laughs> jumbo which is basically the, the the jumbo guy jumbo boy jumbo elephant haha <laughs> <laughs> yeah but jumbo comes in and it gets really complicated because the adults will start talking with each other a lot, which is kind of hard to understand if you are a beginner. So I think I might just end this episode here. This was a very chill episode. I know that my voice was kind of monotone here and that's also because I'm kind of sick, but at the same time, really just having a chill time and just hanging out in my in my room and just reading this with you guys is really fun and if you think this is too boring the way i did it right now please tell me i can like be more enthusiastic about it but it's been a really chill time just reading through this thing and trying to explain like little details and if you like the way i did this please tell me in the comments so i know that i can just proceed with it and maybe also take other mangas read through the first few chapters explain the easy parts and just go into the grammar as we did with this one i will probably continue this one if you like it i really need to know this so please tell me in the comments i might also make a poll about it in a few days where i just ask you did you like yotsubato do you want the next episodes to be the next few pages of this chapter i expected us to read a little bit more of it but i guess it's been it's been really slow if you want this to be faster, tell me as well, because I can go through it much faster than I did right now. But I thought I would start with a very easy and slow pace so that people that don't really read in Japanese often actually can keep up and really take every word, dissect it and know what it means in which terms and which sentence, which is kind of the point of this exercise. Um, if you want to read these um, pages yourself, just look them up on Google, you'll find them. Or you just you can also just take the, or the the physical book as I said and just order it somewhere. I definitely recommend this book to any Japanese beginner, but the pages where the adults talk can be a little bit hard. I really hope this was insightful. Please leave a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't yet, because it would really help out the channel and really tell me that you actually like these videos and just in general yeah just make me happy <laughs> i'll see you in the next one Matane. <laughs>